So it would give me a moment to fire up everything here, and I hope it all works. So far, so good. Okay, we got it. Coming to you tonight, as you know, that uh, last month that some of us, a group of us, went to Jamaica, and uh, we, some of us spent about 10 days, some of us stayed a little longer for two weeks, and uh, we were there to participate in the campaign. Uh-oh, hang on. Let me go back and start over here. to participate in campaigns in, in the town of Mandeville, which all know that it's been a long-standing work with this congregation. It goes back to the late 1980s, and uh, it uh, kind of began with Brother Gilbert Myatt and his wife when he lived down in uh, Mandeville when he worked for Reynolds Aluminum, and the church there actually began in their house with the help of two young Jamaican preachers. And, and I believe it was about 19... 87, 88 or so that uh, members from here began to go and, and help uh, uh, work on the campaigns there in each year. And so it's uh, kind of continued ever since. We continue to support Carl. Uh, he's been preacher there in Mandeville since I believe it was 1994, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, he's now assisted there by Brother Duke Brown, who was a graduate of Memphis School of Preaching, who was uh, from another part of the island, but he and his wife, Maxine, and their family uh, reside there in Mandeville uh, for the last three years, and uh, they have worked well together. The congregation has uh, grown uh, and continues to be, uh, to grow through the evangelistic work that uh, those two men do, and so it's a privilege and a uh, great opportunity for us to go. Uh, we went there on July 13th. We left Corpus Christi at about 5 o'clock in the morning and proceeded to Dallas and then to Miami and made it to Kingston. Uh, I believe it was about 1 o'clock that afternoon, and believe it or not, we had no flight delays. We had no lost luggage. Uh, we cleared through customs in about five minutes and no problems getting the van or anything. So that's a rare feat to accomplish. And, and actually those that returned uh, the following Monday uh, made it home likewise for Randy and Poogie and I was a little glitch in it in Dallas as usual, but we're getting used to that. Uh, a free night in, in Big D. What can, more can you ask for? But first of all, though, we certainly appreciate the congregation's support and those who liberally gave to help all of us to go. Many of us could not have gone without the help of, of many of you, and we appreciate that fact. And because of that, uh, that giving, that too made you uh, involved in this work. And, of course, any success that we had, anything that we were able to accomplish, we give all the glory to God Almighty uh, because he is the one, after all our efforts, is the one who gives the increase. Uh, let me see now if I can 
make this thing function properly. Okay, there's our group that went this year, and that's a sister of myself and Miranda and Perry Ray and, and Dallas Presley and Emily uh, Day Deer and, and Tyler and Poogie and Taryn Blumel and uh, Peyton. And also the young man in the cap there is Timothy Hall, and uh, he is from the Bangs congregation. Uh, he's a friend of Poogie's, and, and he joined us as, uh, this year uh, to go. Uh, there's Mrs. O'Mealy there. She's the owner and hostess of the Country Home Villa, which, uh, for which we've stayed for about the last 10 years. Uh, she is suffering from a degenerative hip condition and is uh, fixing to have a hip replacement, and so she gets around with a walker. But she is a gracious lady, and, and her and her housekeeper, Joy, have taken so good a care of us over the years. You, you can't help but always continue to say thankful, uh, be thankful for her and, and having that place to stay. And of course, is uh, for the meeting, uh, Brother Robert Solomon, whom you all all know since he's been here and, and held meetings here at, at, at Portland, he was the speaker for the week. Uh, Again, he continues to preach a resident park congregation in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and of course, you know, he is from Jamaica. He used to preach in Montego Bay. He's a very close friend of Carl's, but I believe this man was very, very grateful to be back in Jamaica and, and to preach there. The, the power of his preaching that week was just awesome, and and and. I told him if we ever have him back, he better not shortchange us again. We want him to preach like he preached down there in Mandeville, and he preached some powerful lessons that night. But he would do the preaching through Friday. He would return home uh, on Saturday, and then Brother Duke Brown uh, would close out the meeting uh, on Sunday night uh, with a powerful lesson about the gospel being the power of God unto salvation. So they were the two preachers uh, during the meeting, for the meeting. And again, uh, the meeting went every night from, from Sunday night through, through Friday night and then, then on, concluded on the, the following Sunday there. Uh, Robert also preached Sunday morning uh, in Mandeville the first Sunday while I... Uh, gave the Bible class, and, and then on the last Sunday, I, I gave the Bible class and also preached that morning, and Brother Duke would finish that night. But there's a, the three of them right there with, with Tyler and, and such, and I got a little bit ahead of myself, but first of all, I want to know that uh, our work didn't start for this trip on the 13th when we left that we actually started preparing for this work uh, back in May and all of those that came with us uh, we would meet on Sunday afternoon before worship evening worship for an hour and a half or two and, and we would uh, go over the various doctrines and, and such that we might encounter uh, in Jamaica while we were studying with people uh, the first lesson, what we went over to first was establishing biblical authority. Uh, that was a lesson that's always handy, and that's the starting place for any Bible study is, is making sure that we want to see what God says and not what we say or what men say. And, and I always like to remember Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man be found a liar. Uh, but we started with that. We also had lessons and studied on the Sabbath day, whether it's to be observed or not, because the Seventh-day Adventist Church is one of the largest denominations and most influential denomination on the island, so you run into that a, a lot of times. Uh, we had lessons on uh, the miracles and tongue speaking because Pentecostalism is uh, probably right behind Adventism. Uh, so we, we talked on that, and then, of course, you uh, it's not uncommon to run into some young Mormons walking the street trying to do the same thing you're doing, but they're trying to 
convince people of their, uh, with their Book of Mormon and such. So we, we learned a little bit about the Book of Mormon and some of their doctrines. And then also uh, you run into Jehovah Witnesses. So we, we studied on those things and we did so nearly every Sunday up to the time, uh, the week before we left. Uh, also, at the time, Larry was having the personal evangelism class, so many of them uh, made all of those that they could so we could uh, practice up on that to, to put it all to use. And as you notice, it was a pretty young group of people that I had with me, but uh, that went with me this year, and, and I just can't express how proud I am of how they did. I couldn't expect any more of what they uh of what they did or what they, uh, how hard they worked. You couldn't expect any more. I guess if there was only one thing I'd, I'd like is somebody old enough to drive, but uh, I can't speed them up and, and uh, the laws or the uh, po uh, rental car or policy insurances say they have to be a certain age before they can drive. And I know Dallas is itching to get behind the wheel of those hairpin turns and everything because he thinks of his go-kart days and, he said, I can do this, so one of these days I'm going to turn it over to him. I did make, uh, would like to mention, I think this year on an island that's 150 miles long and 50 miles wide, I drove 1,000 miles in two weeks. That's a lot of driving on the roads of Jamaica. <laughs> so I, I appreciate his help one of these days. Uh, but they, they were troopers. They were always ready to go. They helped and assisted in any way they could. Uh, they had done their studies and everything. And, and so, like I said, you, you, you just have to be proud of what they did. We started every morning uh, before breakfast there. Generally, when we gathered around the table for breakfast before we had a prayer, well, we all took turns reciting Bible verses, uh, preferably by memory, but sometimes, especially as the week gets longer and you're getting a little tired and fatigued or you're getting older like I am and your memory's starting to falter, uh, though we read them, but... The thing about it was, was to keep these verses fresh in our minds, and it was a good way to, to, to keep the, that Bible knowledge to the forefront, especially uh, in the things when we were talking to people every day. And we did that in the morning meal. We did it in the evening meal uh, before our prayers. So uh, it was a good exercise for all of us just to help us with our Bible knowledge and, and, and memory work. And they did a great job at doing all of that. Uh, there was song leading every week. As, if, if you've gone to Jamaica, you, you know the singing is something else down there. The song leaders for the week were Brother Bembridge here uh, from Ty Dixon. Uh, he would travel, uh, keep going the wrong way which is about a three hour drive from, from Mandeville uh, and he would he led singing on about three nights, and then Brother Steve Beckford here, he's the song leader at Mandeville. Uh, he led songs for us as well. So generally, you know, there's about an hour of singing uh, before the meeting begins. Uh, and but those were our song leaders. Again, these young people went to work. Uh, Tyler and, and Dallas. Uh, both provided devotionals during the week. That's how we began our day each day when we got to the building before we began VBS and, and, and studies and all of that. We began with a devotional, and, and they both had opportunities to uh, present devotionals as well. Uh, they also, during worship service uh, and during the meeting, would lead prayers uh, and lead the communion and such as well. Dallas is going to, was got tasked with even a, a little bit bigger chore uh,
later on, which I will talk about in a moment here. And these ladies here, this is Sister Vita Harriet uh, on your right, and Sister Florence Allen in the middle, and Sister Carolyn Gottschalk. These were the ladies who uh, cooked for the congregation during the week. They provided meals for all the workers every day, uh, and also assembled treats for the for the children at the conclusion of the VBS. And so we had a VBS that went from Monday to to Thursday, and and. Uh, I guess you say the leader of the VBS team was Miranda. She, she taught the younger children, which would be the largest class by far, but we also had uh, Terry would teach the older girls. And Dallas, like I said, he had a, he had a little bit bigger chore. He got the older boys. And, and I was really surprised how large that class became. Uh, usually if you got just a handful of them, you got a handful. Uh, we started out on Monday with 35 children uh, and all on, on Tuesday the next day it grew to 59 on Wednesday it grew to 79 and on Thursday the last day it was nearly a hundred children uh, and out of that hundred of they predominantly the younger children but like I said Dallas I believe the last count I had he had like 22 or 24 young men in a class outside the building there. So he was pretty well swamped, so he had some help with, uh, from the others and from uh, Brother Carl and Brother Chris. And Terry, I believe, averaged somewhere close to 20, or it grew to 20, uh, two of the young ladies at one time. So uh, Carl said it was the largest VBS attendance that we'd ever had at Mandeville. So. Of course, at the end of the Thursday there, the kids were wanting it to go longer, and all the teachers were just saying, no way. <laughs> but they, they were good. The theme of VBS was obedience. And, and of course, uh, in Mandeville and anywhere else we go, that uh, we try to stress to the children, it's not a vacation for them, but it's Bible school. It's a Bible study. So we're... We want to teach them the Bible. We want to plant that seed in their hearts. And Randa and Terry and Dallas, they brought lessons on obedience from the life of Samuel in 1 Samuel 3 and from Daniel in chapter, Daniel chapter 1 and about, uh, how Daniel purposed in his heart from the life of Paul uh, in Acts chapter 9 when he was obedient to that heavenly vision. And, of course, we didn't emphasize the heavenly vision, but the command from Jesus Christ to go uh, into the city and be told what he must do. And then, of course, the example of Jesus Christ himself, uh, coming from Hebrews 5, 8, and 9, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. So, uh, and even as a young man, uh, how he was about his father's work. So we tried to instill this in these young children, and, and hopefully one day that seed will sprout even further and they'll desire even more study. Uh, they were assisted by Emily and, and Taryn and Peyton and Poogie uh, in the class. Also they had, uh, well here's a few pictures, you can see how it kind of grows. Uh, that's the ears they have on the, their head there, the ears to hear. Uh, that was from the lesson of 1 Samuel. And I keep going the wrong way. That's a pretty full classroom. And of course, some need special attention, which that was uh, willingly and ably provided. Uh, and this one here, I'm not quite sure who's comforting who and who fell asleep on whose shoulders, but uh, y'all be the judge of that. And of course, when sometimes they need a little extra help and a, a little extra careful, watchful eye over them, and, and Taryn and Peyton, and they were more than willing to provide that. And they were assisted also by that uh, 
Sister Maxine Brown uh, on the right and Sister Carolyn Gottschall. Uh, they help with the VBS too and, and the serving of the treats and such. And Maxine, again, is the wife of Brother Duke. Here's Terry's classroom. Uh, you can see it's pretty full. Dallas, he's stealing himself. He's getting ready for the onslaught. Again, that was about the first day. Here is uh, on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, it is filled up. Uh, they had many interesting discussions. I hear the boys had a lot of questions, and, and some of it had to do, you know, why, do, why should I become a Christian? You know, what value is this? Some of them had a problem with, well, if I become a Christian, what are my friends going to going to say what are they going to do so uh, we tried to answer that for them to show you the value of becoming a Christian now, one of the things that was different in this campaign that uh, we hadn't done before uh, on Tuesday night we had a street meeting we didn't come to the church building uh, for the meeting we went up to the top of the hill if, uh, the building for the Bloomfield congregation sits down at the bottom of a long hill, and it's probably, I guess, if you walk it, it's about a good two miles to the very top. At the top, there's another neighborhood up there called Dunrobin. Uh, and that area it used to be, when I first came, didn't have hardly any uh, homes or anything out there. It's grown up pretty good, uh, but now there's a, a pretty good neighborhood up there. Carl had made arrangements with uh, Miss Joan, who owns this grocery, little grocery store here, neighborhood grocery store, to hold a street meeting out front. Uh, there was also another location that was chosen to have on another night, but unfortunately, that person, uh, as Carl said, his mind went south on the idea, and, and that fell through. But we did on Tuesday night, uh, we did hold the meeting up here in front of uh, Miss Jones Groceries. We're gathering here. We had been out uh, walking the streets and everything earlier in the afternoon, uh, handing out tracts and inviting people to come. Uh, they're starting to gather. Uh, here at the store, it, it's right about dusk. And of course, we kind of ran into an old friend. Some of y'all may recognize this is uh, Claudia Walker, Ken Loy's daughter, uh, Ken Loy Walker's daughter, she happened to come. There was a little water supply point there, and she'd come to fill up her jug with water, so Terry got to visit with her, and uh, while she was there, uh, and so, uh, doing that, again, here, here's the four horsemen. Of the apocalypse, I guess, they're out walking the street inviting people as Tyler and Tim and, and Dallas is behind Brother Duke there, and it's not a really clear picture, but it's the best I had. Again, it's getting dusk, and, and Brother Bembridge is out front there, and we had the speaker set up, and so we begin to sing choruses uh, and hymns uh, prior to uh, Brother Solomon began preaching. And now it's dark and, a, and the crowd is gathered and it's actually larger. They didn't really have a picture to show you how large it really was, but uh, it had grown quite large and there was members from 10 other uh, congregations in the area that had come as well and, and there was a pretty good turnout from the neighborhood uh, and where it almost closed the street. Uh, where cars couldn't get by. Uh, and here's Brother Solomon right there, if you see my pointer on there. Uh, he's beginning his lesson and preaching, and I believe that night it was on choices. And it's a powerful lesson, and he's out front preaching, and uh, like I said, it was well attended, and it's something that... Uh, Many of these preachers are doing more and more uh, in Jamaica is having these street meetings. Uh, 
We also, again, of course, our intent is to sit down and study the Bible uh, with people and have Bible studies. Uh, this man here, his name is Ramon Singh. He is the husband of Lasana. Her married name Singh of HDFU member Lassie. This is her husband. And they just had their first baby uh, child this past week. But Ramon has been attending uh, worship with Lasana. And so he and Carl had engaged him in some studies, some lively studies. And so uh, I had an opportunity to uh, study with him on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, he has a website on YouTube. It's called Sela Media, S-E-A-L-A. -A. And Ramon is a former Rastafarian. And his website, he's, he, he dedicates it to trying to lead other Rastafarians out of that religion now. Uh, he ha has, he's very sincere in, in what he believes about the Bible, but it's not according to truth. And, and we had a three-hour study. He recorded it. He says he plans to put it up on his uh, website. Uh, but we, uh, of course, it, it ranged, first of all, starting out with uh, Bible authority. We got into uh, discussions on instrumental music and on miracles. He, he believed he had witnessed some some true miracles. Uh, one of them was that a man had lost his arm at the elbow and he saw, he claimed he saw the arm restored. I, I had to seriously doubt him on that and, and ask him to offer some proof on it, which he he couldn't other than he'd seen it, but it, it was a, uh, as Carl would say, a lively discussion, but hope much good would come. He, he also records it for the purposes of going back and studying on these things, and because he would like to know the truth, uh, but uh, it's going to take a lot of work with him right now. Uh, Another young man that we studied with was this young man had been coming to uh, worship for about uh, four or five weeks. His name is John Ross. He looks like he's about 15 or 16. He's actually 35. But he has a very varied religious background. Uh, his mother, his grandmother was Catholic. He's got a grandfather involved in a Pentecostal church. He has studied with Mormons. Uh, and everything, and now he uh, was wanting to learn about the Church of Christ, but, but he's kind of one of these fellows that's really looking, going down the line of a cafeteria and just kind of picking and choosing what he wants to believe and trying to make his own religion out of that. So and he tried to encourage him and get him to seek after the truth and, and only the truth. So we had, uh, I had three or four studies with him. Tyler studied with him. Uh, on a number of occasions as well. Brother Duke had been studying with him, so that uh, as long as he keeps coming, uh, we'll continue to study. He's a very sincere and humble young man. Uh, but again, th those lessons we had on tongues and miracles uh, came in handy with us uh, for us this week. Here's another young man uh, Tyler studying with. This young man there was four young men that had come to the street meeting, and then the next day or two, they had come down to the building uh, there in VBS, and, and Tyler was act, uh, able to study with him. This young man uh, expressed a desire to obey the gospel, but uh, he wanted to talk to his mother first, and, and we're still uh, hoping to get that sorted out with him. But that, that was one benefit of the street meeting. Uh, on Friday, we went to the community of Mile Gully. Brother Kerry Walcott, who's a preacher there, has been laboring in Mile Gully. They had a campaign that was beginning uh, the next week and Sunday, so we went there on Friday to help him uh, in that effort. Uh, Carl went with us, and Brother Chris Campbell went with us, so uh, they hit the road 
uh, Carl and a, uh, young people hit the road to go hand out tracks and to talk to people. Uh, and there's Tyler again talking. He's pretty good at talking to everybody who walks by. This is Brother Chris. Uh, And again, the ladies are going around, uh, up and down the hills and the houses. And again, it, the weather for us was pretty nice this day. Probably one of the coolest days I've ever uh, had in Mile Gully. Uh, there's Dallas. Uh, Brother Carl ran into a study uh, that Brother Walcott had set up, so he ended up uh, with this study. and. And the others, too, while they're out door walking, had opportunities to, to engage people in studies. And uh, I believe just about every one of us had an opportunity to pr participate in at least one study. There's Emily and I have just finished studying with the Mrs. Pert uh, in this home. Uh, she had some health problems, and she wanted to be baptized, but she was worried of how she got around those health problems, so we tried to encourage her that if she truly had a will to obey, that we could make sure that that could happen. Here's Dallas and, and Tyler uh, studying with a lady, and again, it's a, uh, on the subject of tongues and miracles, and I think Randa later would join them uh, on that. Terry and, and some of the girls are uh, speaking with uh, some other ladies. You know, Saturday, we kind of found ourselves with some free times, and, you know, there were times that uh, Jesus took the disciples off to the mountain to get some rest, so uh, I took the team, and we went down to Treasure Beach for a few hours to, to just kind of get your feet wet and, and to relax a little bit, and this is on the south coast of uh, Jamaica, south of Mandeville. It's a beautiful spot. The water was just royal blue, and and sky's nice. Now, it's strange because a good part of the island is suffering a severe drought. Uh, you can see it's all brown up here, but the only thing that you saw flowering was the bougainvillea, uh, which was beautiful, but other than the trees and such, uh, it was brown and burnt up, and, uh, but it, it made that water even look even more refreshing. We just spent a little time there, and then we went back, and we had, uh, I had another study with John Ross set up that afternoon at the house. Again, of course, the whole reason we're there is to save souls, to help save souls. And uh, there were some fruit that were born uh, on Thursday. This is a Mrs. Sandra Morgan. Uh, she's 67 years old. Uh, she obeyed the gospel on Thursday just before the meeting began. Uh, Brother Duke had studied with this woman about two years ago. Uh, she lived with a sister and a mother up above the church building. Uh, they were very adversarial towards the church. And they, they literally, at one point, when she wanted to obey the gospel, they ran Brother Duke and his wife Maxine out of the house. And it kind of shut down the study for some time and she came back uh, she still wanted to learn she still wanted to obey uh, Miranda and Terry had an opportunity to study with her on Wednesday afternoon Carl studied with her again Thursday morning uh, that afternoon she she decided despite the way that her family felt that she wanted to obey the gospel so Carl baptized her uh, in the Christ uh, that afternoon and here she is being baptized. Uh, we also, another young lady, this is Johnny Ann Ratshay. She, uh, I believe, is about 15 or 16. She lives with Brother Duke uh, and his wife, Maxine, and their family. They had been studying with her. Uh, Miranda, again, had an opportunity to study with her. And on Thursday, Afternoon, too, she obeyed the gospel. 
And there she is being immersed. We actually had one other baptism that week, and uh, I know he doesn't really want to make much to do about it, but as it is significant, Tyler began having some doubts about his understanding from when he was originally baptized when he was younger. He thought about it all week. He wanted to make sure that his salvation was sure. So Saturday morning, uh, at his request, we took him down to the building, and he was immersed in water for the forgiveness of his sins. So, uh, So the meeting concluded, and there's Monday morning, and we're loaded up and trucking back to, to Kingston, and I think they're just all happy because we managed to fit everything back in the van again. Uh, with 10 people and, and 10, 12 pieces of luggage, it gets a little crowded in a 12-passenger van. And so they... Uh, Terry and Dallas and Emily and, and Taryn and Peyton and Tyler and Tim, uh, they boarded their flight home on Monday. Uh, Poogie and Miranda and I, uh, once we dropped them off, uh, we headed for the home of uh, Sister Dolly Martin, uh, the widow of Brother Cliff Martin there that uh, we stayed at her house, that we're, we're going to continue uh, a gospel crusade in, in Ty Dixon. And this work was begun by Brother Cliff Martin and, Do and, and Dolly and, uh, back in the mid-1980s, if I have my date correct. Uh, of course, uh, Vandeville is an urban setting. Here we're going to a rural, a country setting here. This is uh, Mount Diablo in Jamaica. It's uh, in kind of the northern part of the country. It's the second highest peak in Jamaica. And Ty Dixon is up on the side, side of this mount. The church building is kind of on one side, uh, and the town is a little ways around uh, the mountain from the church building, and this is from the town side view. Uh, of it, and it, it, it's a rugged looking peak, and this is down below in the valley, some of the homes and such. And of course, when you go to Ty Dixon, you go up over a mountain, down a mountain, and you're winding and turning, and it's just kind of one lane road. Then you break out, you come down into a, a valley that's all sugarcane fields on, on a sugarcane plantation. And this is a road uh, going through the sugarcane, and we're going to yonder mountain over here. Uh, and we go up that mountain, and we come to the church building. And this is the church building in, in Ty Dixon, uh, which some you may be familiar with. And again, this is at uh, the home of Dolly, uh, where we stayed, and, and HD has stayed with her many, many years and, and such, and she's just a wonderful person and uh, opened her home and cared for us. Uh, and she went with us every day to Ty Dixon and such. It's, uh, that congregation is is dear to her, that many friends are there uh, and such, because they had such a part of it. Again, Brother Bembridge is the, the preacher there. Uh, he would also, he, he's one of the finest song leaders I know, and, and he led singing uh, most nights. Brother Dave Osborne is the preacher from Linstead. He, he started the meeting on Sunday night and preached on, on Monday. Uh, I would preach on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, and then Brother Osborne would close the meeting out on Thursday night. And Tuesday night, uh, when I was preaching, uh, there was a number of brethren from Mandeville who made the three-hour drive uh, to come to, in support of the meeting there. Brother Bembridge, like I said, is, and his wife and some members of the Ty Dixon had been uh, very supportive of Mandeville in their campaigns over the last several years. So, they're just kind of working together. And this was great because the, the week of Mandeville, I don't forgot to mention, but it was a busy week in Jamaica. There was like five or six campaigns going on at one time. Uh, so a lot of support that uh, 
the congregations would give each other wasn't really there in that week because they were all hosting their own campaigns. So uh, in Ty Dixon, it was different. There were more congregations free to come, and, and so our crowds were much larger at Ty Dixon uh, than they had been at Mandeville. And there's just Miranda in her element. Uh, thankful that she's there, and I guess one of these days we may lose her to there. Uh, here she was teaching a ladies' class every night. There'd be about 18 to 20 ladies uh, come, uh, some of them members of the congregation, uh, some of them just uh, citizens of the, of the community. Uh, there's their building. They recently, uh, with our help, uh, had put sheetrock up in their ceiling. It was just really a tin roof. Before that, the heat became quite intense during uh, the hot times of the year, so this helps in, in keeping it cool uh, for them and everything. Uh, here are some of the ladies' class here and, and, and Sister Dolly uh, with them uh, right before the class begins. And then Poogie, while Miranda was doing the ladies' class, Poogie conducted a VBS. Uh, with the help of Sister Althea Bembridge, Oliver's wife there. But uh, we, uh, this is kind of Poogie's baptism by fire. Uh, there was about, she averaged about 24 kids uh, every night. And, and in their, this small classroom, they have a larger classroom, but it, it has no roof at this time. So this was what was available. But she did a really super job uh, doing the VBS. There's some more of the happy faces. Uh, there's some of them coming up the road uh, from down the mountain to the VBS. Uh, here are they with her afterwards. I guess you could call them Poogie's Brigade. Uh, they would flock to her after class and sit with her during the meeting, so she was not without company at any time uh, during our stay in Ty Dixon. There's Sister Dolly speaking with one of the elder members uh, of the congregation. Uh, of course, renewing that acquaintance. It's been the last time we were there, I think, was 2016. Uh, so it had been a time since she had been able to get up there. This is Sister Doris, another one of the elderly sisters. And she had a unique experience. As you saw, the hills and the... Uh, where the homes were located, most of them were down on the side of the mountains. Well, one evening, while she's home, a chunk of the mountain fell off and fell through the roof of her house. Luckily, it was in one bedroom that was not occupied, so she was quite shaken and everything uh, having that happen. Uh, but other sisters provided uh, places for her to stay uh, while her home gets repaired. And then we get back to Kingston uh, late at night uh, after the meeting and such. And if you know me, you know I can't resist jerk chicken. Well, this is a picture of the best jerk chicken in the world. Uh, they cook it out on the streets in, in Kingston. Uh, this man, who uh, there's, he's got family members along there. They cook it and everything, and they're considered the best. Uh, in Kingston, and luckily, Sister Dolly is a very good friend of them. Because uh, when I'm there, I can keep them in business and they can make a profit. But we enjoyed jer some jerk chicken uh, while with Sister Dolly. So again, we concluded the meeting on Thursday. Uh, on Friday morning, and it was time for us to head home as well, and so we did. Uh, a very rewarding, a very, uh, it's one of those things where you feel very weary, but you feel, feel very satisfied at the same time, and, and again, these young people who went, they prepared themselves very well. They conducted themselves even better. They were ready and willing workers uh, for wherever we went, whatever we did. Uh, I can't say enough about them, but I hope they'll come again next year. 
and the year after. Uh, we did while we were in Kingston. We were visited one day uh, by another brother from another congregation in Kingston, the Delano, Delano Avenue congregation. Uh, and they were wanting to seek our assistance in having a campaign with them next year. They don't have a full-time preacher, and many of their members used to be members of the Lincoln Crescent congregation that Brother Martin had started uh, with his labors years ago, and after his death, it sort of disbanded, uh, and the property was sold, and, and uh, a number of the members uh, were attending uh, Delano Street, and so they would like our help next year in doing this, so it's hard to say no. I ought, I ought to learn how to say it, I think, but uh, anyway, we look forward to an opportunity of possibly working uh, with them. Uh, the brother who came uh, to talk with us uh, was Brother Stennis Pert, and his brother actually works with Brother Walcott and my Mile Gully, so uh, there's still lots of work to do in this world. Uh, there's still lots of lost souls uh, to be reached, and, and God expects us to still go and do his work and his will as best as we can, and, and you know, in these cases of baptism, there were those who planted the word, there were those who watered, there were those who provided a means of support for us to go, but it was God who, who gave the increase, so we're thankful for those two souls, precious souls that were added to the church, and we pray too for those others we studied with that, that they will keep studying and, and that that keeps getting watered, that uh, they'll obey the truth as well. Because in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus wanted to emphasize one of the most important things. In chapter 5, when he, he spoke there, he spoke about the attitudes of heart that one needs. And the right kind of attitudes that the citizens of the kingdom ought to have. And then he contrasted it with some of the wrong attitudes that people had, and then he would tell the right attitude they needed a half, and then he concluded that uh, chapter by saying, be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And I believe what he was trying to teach us is we want to have the mind of Christ, the mind of God in the way we think. And when we have that kind of mind, then our priorities and our treasures will be in the right place. And he begins to talk about treasures and rewards in chapter 6. And he concludes in that by saying, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And that's in that verse, though, that we see that he mentions an obligation that we are to seek. And the word seek means we are to make a diligent, patient inquiry into these things. And what are we to look for? What are we trying to uh, find, and that is we are trying to find out what our obligation is in this life, what our purpose is in this life, and what our obligation is, is to God, and, and then to do something about it. It also gives us the object of our seeking, and that is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? Well, it means to seek the blessings and privileges and, uh, and such, of being a member of the kingdom of God, becoming a citizen of the kingdom. And then as we become citizens of that kingdom, we are to follow after his righteousness, to live soberly and godly and righteously in this life. But how do we seek, to, how do we become a citizen? Well, Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, he's more specific in verse 5, he said, unless, except you be born of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so we see there, one must be born again of two elements, the Spirit and water. And what is the Spirit? Well, basically, it's the Word of God. 
You know, we have purified our heart by obeying the truth. We've been born again by the word of God, 1 Peter 1, 23, 22 and 23. And, and James 1, 18 said we are begotten by the gospel. God begets us by the gospel to be born again. And so what does that tell me? By the water. Well, Jesus said you must believe and be baptized to be saved. So we see there where the water comes in is through baptism. Again, of course, in baptism, that's where we come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's where our sins are washed away. And Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he presented this lesson. And if you remember going back to, to Acts chapter 1, verse 3, that Jesus spent those last days on earth with them teaching things pertaining to the kingdom of God and how to give how they could teach others to enter the kingdom of God. Then Peter stood up and he preached the gospel to them, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He talked about how Jesus was now on his throne. The one they crucified was now king and Lord and Savior of all. And they cried out, men and brethren, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And so we see repentance was necessary. And then again, to be immersed in water to have sins forgiven. It's not necessarily enough to be repent. The one had to be, you had to deal with your sin to have them washed away. And that's exactly what Ananias told Paul, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. And then we see when one did that, and, and we know 3,000 on that day obeyed the gospel, and it said that the Lord added them to his church, Acts 2.47. So we see there the kingdom was established and the church and the kingdom were the same things and those that uh, were baptized that day entered in the kingdom. So now everyone who does so in a like manner, God adds them to his kingdom. If you're not a citizen of the kingdom, if you've never obeyed the gospel, you've never sought the kingdom of God first and and to be mindful, it was not only telling us that we have an obligation to seek these things out, it tells us what we are to seek for, but it also gave us the order in which that was to be done. First, it is the first and foremost thing that we are to do in all our whole life is to seek after God's kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Nothing else is to come before that. Any decision you make should be, is this God's will or is it my will? And God's will should always come first. And all that you do, any decision, what job you want to do, where you want to live, or what kind of activity you want to engage in, if there's an opportunity to do something for God first, we do that first and do the other, second or third or whatever. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then he throws in a little extra there for us, that if we do these things, then all these other things will be added to us. The things that we sometimes get lost uh, that, we, that we're seeking after before the kingdom of God, those things that we need to live daily, uh, paying the house payment, putting food on the table, working and such. We tend to let those things come first and the kingdom last. But he said, if you seek me first, then I'll make it much easier on you to get these things. I'll, add the, I'll throw these in the deal. I'll add them to you. It's a conditional promise if you seek his kingdom first. You have an opportunity tonight to seek the kingdom first, become a citizen of the kingdom, being born again of the water and the spirit by the word of truth. If you've not done so, you can do so right now as we stand and sing. If you've been a citizen of the kingdom and you've not been living righteously, following after God's righteousness, you need to amend your ways. You need to make that right now with God and again turn to seeking the kingdom first. We can do that now as we stand and sing.